lot of two. I got back to the States from Taiwan and I forgot to convert my money back to American currency. But I got one souvenir while I was over there and I look what I found. So this vlog is all about the week after Puerto Rico. So it's Taiwan and the week before my training. Uh, so here we go. Alright, so we had another rough week of training because of juggling everything and I I really don't like how my training schedule has been, but you do with what you can. And I still haven't figured out that formula. Not quite yet. Same workout as last week except now I'm at Hastings instead of Apple Valley. Shoot! 4x20 pulling a 50 pound sled. 4x... 30 pulling a 25 pound sled. And I'm gonna go 2 by 40 and 2 by 50 without a sled. See how those feel. Um, my acceleration day, uh, I haven't been feeling very poppy anymore because of, you know, lack of the essentials like sleep and um, quality training. So I added a few plyos in there and surprisingly I'm like strong enough to do them. Hopefully they build a little bit more pop into my system. Uh, vaulting, I jumped with uh, the high school kids again because I couldn't find a time that would work with Steve and Caroline. Son of a bitch. Again, it went it went all right. Um, started working on some things and uh, yeah, it's close to jumping five meters again from four, which um, is all right. You know, we were still working on just getting that pole open and aggressively throwing my arms down to my legs and it started to work and now I'm starting to think maybe I gotta aggressively swing my legs to my hands. We'll see. I don't know. Just ideas floating around in my head. There, look how deep we landed. We landed in the back of the square on that one. It's because instead of swinging... Uh, before I knew it, Friday was here. And I leave for Taiwan on that Friday. I got to the airport three hours early because when you travel with poles, you never know what's gonna happen. Here's how it always goes. Here's the air guy who checks you in at the counter. Are you the guy with the poles? Yes. This is gonna be a huge problem. I figured. <laughs> and they look at you and they look at the poles. Unless it's Southwest. I've never had issues with Southwest. You just show them the poles and they're like, Oh, pull up poles. Do, 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 do. Boom, you're done. But I was flying United. And sometimes United's really good, but if you get people who've never handled pole ball poles before, they're just like... Hmm, do I have to weigh each pole individually? Do I weigh the whole bag? Do I have to carry it? Where do I put the sticker? Is it gonna fit on the plane? Can we cut them in half? They bend, right? Can I bend them? Oh god, just, just put them on the plane as is. Don't bend them or break them. Please don't do that. And it makes me super nervous. Makes any vaulter nervous because you have thousands of dollars in a pole bag and they're talking about cutting them in half just so they can fit on the plane. Don't break the poles! So after the pole issue, the guy looked at me and he's like, you're going to Taiwan, right? I'm like, yes sir, I'm going to LA straight to ta Taiwan. He just goes, you're going to have a problem. I'm like, Another problem? I thought we already went over problems with the poles. <laughs> Uh, your travel agent listed your first name as your last name, last name as your first name. So I'm like, what? And they're like, so I don't have a problem sending you 
over there, but getting back into the States might be a huge problem because your passport and your ticket do not match. First off, who forgets their GoPro in the cities? So I'm going to do everything with my phone. So I'm freaking out about, well, I guess I'm going to go to L.A. And if they don't let me on, I guess I'm going to have a cool story and try and call some people that I know in L.A. Or I get on the plane. Now here's the next sketchy part that could happen. I could get all the way over there, and they might not let me come back to the States because my thing's wrong. So... <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen. It's kind of goofy. Um, yeah, very sketch. Uh, I have three first names, Sean, Michael, and Francis, so that's just terrible. The guy's like, yeah, we can get you to L.A., and they'll probably get you onto the plane, but you'll have to beg and plead your case. So I was like... Well, I got nothing else to do. Let's go to L.A. and see what happens. <laughs> so, there I went. Been awake for 24 hours. This is when I left you over there for So I got on the plane and I get to Taiwan and we went Minnesota to LA, LA to Taiwan and then when we got to Taiwan we had to drive an hour. And that doesn't include layovers or any of that other fun stuff we were talking about. So overall I did straight non-stop traveling for over 28 hours. I started counting the hours and I stopped at 28 because it was like, like, oh god, did I really just do that? It was a lot of traveling, a lot of sitting around. but uh. I met some cool dudes on the plane. I don't know. I, I like meeting people. I like hearing people's stories. What's your story? Tell me your story. I like your story. Just tell me your story. I'll tell you mine. You want to hear my story? I don't care. I'll just let me hear yours. I don't know. So we got to the hotel at like midnight. And like always, I just explored the room, figure out how everything works, and where everything is at, what the toilet looks like. Hello. I'm vlogging with my phone. Here's the room. Big old bed. Let's check out the view. Nice. I'm sure it looks better in the morning. A little plant. I like it. Mm -hmm. What is this? <laughs> Do I sit on this and pee in there? I'm going to bed. It's been like 28 hours. I'm tired. Getting a little loopy. Flipped down the TV and watched about 15 minutes of TV. This whole time, the only time I turned the TV on was that first day. Because when I watched it, the first thing that came on, their locals were riding on a roller coaster. Well, they had one balloon in their hand. The winner was the one who got through the whole entire roller coaster without the balloon popping. 10 minutes of that, I was like, eh. And there was another dude sitting, like, on his head, drinking milk and eating a banana. And whoever drank the milk the fastest while eating the banana while they were upside down. One. You know what, think of it now, I, I thought it was kind of strange, I was like, I don't know, this is kind of weird. bet when people came over here and they saw like, Ear Factor, and we were eating like, horse buttholes, <laughs> they probably thought Americans were pretty weird too, like. They're eating horse buttholes and bull testicles, and we're just standing on our head eating bananas. <laughs> Those Americans are weird as hell. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about square toilets. It's probably fantastic for those people with big square asses. <laughs> I don't know, mine's pretty round. Let's stick with this guy. <laughs> so I woke up in the morning. They had a buffet for all the athletes. I went to the very top and to eat breakfast, and they had anything and everything you could ever want. It was delicious. It was so good. And they had fruit I've never even heard of before, and I wish I could get my hands on it. So good. So good. So good. And then uh, Darren Niedermeyer, he was the other pole vaulter who went along. Just another amazing pole vaulter, uh, a 570 guy. He's like, hey Sean, there's a garden on the roof, wanna go check it out? I was like, yep. <laughs> I do want to check out that garden on the roof. All the doors were locked. Not sure if we were supposed to do that or not. Here we go. So we went to the roof. I'm not entirely sure if we were supposed to open the window to go onto the roof, or we were just supposed to look at it through the window. It's a little sketchy what I'm about to do here. And we can 
see the second highest building in the entire world that I have seen a lot of people base jump off of because someday I'm gonna do that. Don't tell my mom. She doesn't like that idea, but skydiving could lead to base jumping. But us being the explorers that we are, our curiosity went a little crazy and we got onto the roof. And then we started looking around. And it was awesome. This is cool, man. <laughs> oh, happy you came and found me. Yeah, I mean, ask for forgiveness or permission, right? So, yes, uh, we did that, and then we decided to climb higher. So we climbed this other really sketchy thing. Yeah, <laughs> exploring some more. Is there anything up there? <laughs> this is cool. Yeah. See, someone's been having fun up here. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you open that so slow like a guy with a knife and you come out or something. <laughs> Then after that, we had to go to a, or we got to go to a press conference. I've never been a part of a press conference be so, before. So we walk in and they're having to sign a bunch of posters and stuff. Kind of shoot us into this area and there was a bunch of media people in there. And they sat us down and all of a sudden, I couldn't understand what anyone was saying. But uh, the gist of it was... They were gonna bring in this traditional dance with the dragon. I don't know what it's called, I feel it like a jerk. It was dancing around and it was to bring us all good luck for competing. And it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. They were throwing around, they had uh, the drums, kind of like the beginning of my vlogs. <laughs> I was just sitting there like, This is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Where do I get one of those? I want a big dragon. Halfway through that, they introduced all the elite athletes, and I had no idea what this meet was even about. And I guess it was their national meet, is the Taiwan uh, Championships. But they have it open, so they invite elite athletes from all over the world to come and compete to try and influence their athletes for better performances. So the elite athletes, like Darren Niedermeyer, and they had me for the pole vault. Then they had the Australian 4x1 team, which <laughs> the Australian guys are some of the coolest guys I ever met. And then they were like, well, what do you think of Australia when you think of over here? And I'm like, I think of dingoes and koalas and like crocodile dundee. Are you call that a knife? This is a knife. It's like, no, that's a spoon. Oh, I've seen you play knifey spoonies before. Crocodile hunter. Crikey. And they were like, yeah, it's nothing like that at all. That's what they feed us over here. It's like, well, what do you think about us? And they're like, is it like honey boo-boo or swamp people? Is that what America's like? Oh my God, you think Americans are like honey boo-boo and, and swamp people? We're not like that at all. And then they had like William Clay, Genevieve uh, Termal, and then Angelo Taylor. Right when we landed, I started making dick and fart jokes with this guy. I didn't know who he was. After I'm still kind of joking around with this guy, uh, I realized it's Angelo Taylor. I only realized this because they announced his stats and brought him in front of the whole press conference crew. He's a three-time Olympic gold medalist in the 400 hurdles. I know the name. I didn't know your face. <laughs> I felt dumb again. Now looking back, it's like a blessing in disguise because if I wouldn't known who he was, I probably wouldn't have talked to him. I would have been too, too nervous. So we're doing the whole press conference thing, and then we just warm up on the track, and I felt, felt surprisingly good after sitting that long. My glutes didn't hurt, my hamstrings weren't that tight, shoulders felt fine, everything felt really, really good. <laughs> and then that night, uh, they had a dinner for all the athletes. Uh, I walk up there like dead tired, like I'm not caught up in my sleep. There's a bunch of dudes in suits. I didn't know what to expect. I probably would have worn a tie if I had one, but I didn't. Angelo was kind of like, I don't know if I trust this food, man. Uh, I know there's an Outback down the road. I trust Outback. I know Outback is cool. <laughs> and it was like an 18 course meal. And the very first thing they brought out was like duck. And I don't know if it was raw, but there was still bone in it. And That's what I'm going to eat. I tried to eat it and I couldn't. It's just... <laughs> Oh, I felt bad, but uh, as food kept coming, I was like, I'm just gonna try everything, whatever, and I kept trying it, and some of it didn't look like food, but it tasted fantastic. Yeah, I'll, here, I'll just make a list of all the, I took a picture of everything, and I'll put pass or fail based on if I ate it or not.
Oh! And right as soon as the entertainment started, like through our second course, they brought out a guy playing piano and a lady singing karaoke machine. And that's what they did for the entertainment. They had random people come up and sing karaoke. <laughs> Just owning the karaoke machine. And then after a while they talked Anthony, one of the Australian guys, to come up. <laughs> they busted out a new song and they started singing My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion. And then all of a sudden two random dudes jumped on stage. God, it was hilarious. So I got a pre meet in the very next day, ate some food, and then around lunchtime we decided to go check out Taiwan, go exploring a little bit. It's like 95 degrees, and I really want to eat some of that fruit right now. I'm sure they'd throw me in the fire pit. I did that. We saw some cool temples, and one of them, there was this guy in there guarding, I don't know exactly what was going on, because I don't speak or read their stuff, but um, we found one guy, and he said, these guys stand facing each other for an hour and they can't move or blink. They can't blink. So I asked, like, how do you train not to blink? And he looked at me and just goes, I'm not at liberty to tell you, but it's very, very difficult. <laughs> what happens if they do blink? They go back to training. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, they can't blink? That was crazy, but it was gorgeous. The place was awesome. It was really cool. Um, the temples were awesome. We went to this, and it's like, their main religion is like Buddhism over there, so it was really cool to me, because I don't really practice religion or anything, but I like to follow Buddhism ways of doing things. It just makes more sense, and I've always felt better doing it. Oh, I'm gonna get sick looking at the ground. Um, I'm not Buddhist, but uh, meditation and things like that, so it was cool. It was right up my alley. One of the Australian guys taught me a Taiwan phrase called Ni Hao Jun. It means you are very beautiful or you are beautiful. Hi, Ni Hao Jun. <laughs> Ni Hao Jun. <laughs> Hello, Ni Hao Jun. <laughs> Ni Hao Jun. <laughs> and then later I found out that's not what it means. And no one would tell me what it means. So by. I have no idea what I was yelling at people. I could have been yelling, I have diarrhea! Anyways, I was screaming some phrase in the wrong language at people without knowing what it meant. But some of the reactions were like, uh -huh. and some of them were like, uh, who's this guy? Probably not the smartest thing to do. Okay, I've been talking about how awesome the Australian guys are, but Cam Shuri, one of the coaches, uh, he's like, hey Sean, if you need me to catch steps, catch mids, you know, watch your vault, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to. Oh man, that would be great because last week I didn't have anyone catch my mids and it went terrible. And he stood in the stands and he was just like uh, my coach for the day and helped catch my mids for me. Thank goodness I converted everything in my pole vault journal yesterday from feet to meters because everything was in metric. I didn't know where to start for my four, six, nine or where my takeoff was supposed to be. So I converted everything quick, kind of put little tape marks down, figured out where to go from. Me and Darren get a couple fours in, a couple six in, and right when we go back to fulls, they kick us off the runway. We have like 15 minutes left. Uh, what are you gonna do? Like, oh, no problem, no problem, no problem. So we jump back on the runway, like, get off the runway! <laughs> okay, <laughs> do we have do we have time or not? She's like, you will get a jump, you will get, and we're like, oh, okay. Maybe they just want to put up the crossbar. So we jump off, um, they gave everybody one jump at the crossbar. 
you kidding me? We only had 15 minutes where we did at least maybe three or four run throughs from Foles. Didn't let the bar go any higher than 480, which is like 15, 15 9 or something like that. And I have never um, done a full approach at a bar lower than 17 feet this entire year. Darren runs through and doesn't even swing it up. And then when I came up, I took it off the ground, but I was way under. And I look at Cam, and he just goes. So I must have been, I was under like two feet on my mid, and a foot at my takeoff. And so we wait the whole time. The bar, the meet started at like 14 feet, and slowly worked its way up to uh, 5'10". I came at 5'10", moved back those two feet, and took off, and was still like six inches to a foot under at my mid and a foot under at my takeoff still camp but I swung it took it up made it and then cam just goes <laughs> so I went back another foot and then um, at 430 second attempt uh, first attempt was a blow through because my foot was finally in the right spot and, uh, second attempt it was into a headwind so I start I take two steps and then I feel a headwind and I only had like 15 seconds left on the clock, so I was like, right, see what happens, and I just blasted through it. Uh, I took off right on the money, came up a little short because of the headwind, but made it, and was just like, I got back and I was just like, are you kidding me? I don't think I've made a bar in a normal wind this year, except that 520 bar. Today, like every bar I've made outdoors has been in a freaking headwind, but again, I made 530 again on a head in a headwind so I mean I was pretty okay with that I was like alright let's go to 52 cuz I'm gonna go up a stick I was feeling tired because it was hot out it was muggy so I went to 552 first jump blew through the pole I hit it so good because there wasn't a headwind on that one and steps were in the right spot took off a little bit outside swing it up and just toasted that 15-5 uh, pole it was just done uh, I had the standards at 70, and I went up to the 15.0 flex, uh, went up like a couple fingers on the grip, put, pulled the standards in 10 at like 60, didn't swing any of them up, it's just dumb, I just, I can't believe I didn't do it, one of, they both looked really good too, like watching the video, and I only have the videos of my misses, which sucks, but beat myself up over that one. It was good though, it was the first time since indoor season, my run felt awesome, like, I felt like I was hitting my marks, I was tall, my pole drop was awesome, I was taking off in the right spot without slowing down. I was pretty jacked afterwards. I got second. I got second at the Taiwan Open, so that makes me the Taiwan National Runner Up. Kind of cool. Kind of cool for my second international meet ever. Huge progress that day. Uh, yeah, thinking back at Puerto Rico now, I was just too under. <laughs> I need to move back almost two to maybe three feet, even have a chance. I mean, that's good for my training being very consistent lately and still being able to do that. So I was pretty pumped with the result. There are some shenanigans that happened at the club where I promised Darren I won't talk about it in the vlog. <laughs> so if you ever see Darren, you can always ask him what happened at the Taiwan nightclub. <laughs> Or Angelo Taylor, you could ask Angelo what happened to you. Pretty good time, but yeah, I'll keep that to myself. Or, if you ask me nicely in person, I'll tell you a Taiwan story. <laughs> so, please subscribe, share these, like them, tweet them, retweet them. If you want me to write some training, boom, description. Um, if you want to just donate because you're like, hey, your vlogs are really fun and it looks like they take a lot of time and I would probably purchase them if they were for sale, but I put them for free on YouTube. You know, we just broke 30,000 views, which blows my mind because this thing is not very old at all. And I, so thank you everyone for watching and who is sharing. And I have... I had two meets left, but the meet I had today got canceled due to weather. So I have um, one meet up at NDSU left, and then if I get into US Champs, boom, Champs. And then I think I'm getting burnt out and need a break this summer, so I will be skydiving and mountain biking a lot. Bye! Here's a little contest. So make a video response to you yelling hoot really loud at somebody in public. And whoever has the best video response, I will give you my notes for this week's vlog with 
one of my little business cards and I'll sign it for you. And whatever one has the most comments and likes on it, that'll be the winner. I'll give you two and a half weeks to do it. See ya. How long have we been here? An hour. Pauls? You're gonna make my vlog? You'd be an internet sensation. Don't do that, I'm seeing Yep, this is gonna be a problem. <laughs>